Okay, everybody, listen up. You two have been handpicked specifically for this comparison. Well, the third guy didn't show up, but that doesn't matter. Today, we are going to reveal the new 2020 CT5. And I want everyone to react as if this is some sort of German car, okay? So pay attention to what I'm going to say next. I'm going to read everything from here. Before we get to the video, I want you to learn about this cars. You're not going to see the logo, you're not going to see the brand or anything. So you don't know anything about them, okay? Jesus Christ. Sheila, where in God's name did you find these two morons? I mean, did you actually screen these people? Like, one is wearing headphones and listening to music while I'm talking. Like, and the other guy, he's wearing two glasses. He's wearing two glasses, sunglasses and a reading glasses. Where did you find these guys? You could have just picked the same guys from the Chevy commercial. Can someone please bring McDonald's or something to this guy? He's eating his own snots, for God's sakes. Hello and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another crazy day. It's snowing in Toronto, Canada. It's been snowing for almost a week now and it won't stop. But here we are out comparing these two vehicles. On my right side, we have the 2020 Cadillac XT5. It is the first time that Cadillac has introduced the CT5. It's new to the market with some features that are very similar to the 2020 CT6. Today, we're gonna find out what these two have in common, their differences, and of course, we're gonna talk about technology, the right quality, and, and we'll be taking them out for a ride and test out some cool features that the CT6 offers. And of course, we're gonna talk about the 2020 CT5, and of course, how it compares to its rivals, such as the BMW 3 Series. We'll go into details. I will also make a comparison between the CT5 and the BMW 3 Series, the new generation. For today's video, special thanks goes to our two great partners, Applewood GM, a GM dealership located in Mississauga, Ontario, and of course, Conquest Canada. Conquest Canada helps you to find the right car for the right price. Their website will be in the description box. And of course, for Apple with GM, if you want to test out new Cadillac CT5, even though it's still snowing out there, you can still take it for a test drive. In Canada, this one starts at about $61,000. Meanwhile, the CT5 in Canada starts at about $41,000. So you're looking at about $20,000 more. Now that, of course, depends on packages that you pick. So if you go all the way to the premium, you're looking close to $90,000. A few things that these two have in common. Well, of course, they both offer similar engines, so you can get a V6 for this. CT5 offers also a two-liter engine, which, of course, it is equipped with an all-wheel drive system, or you can get a rear-wheel drive. Meanwhile, the CT6 only offers all-wheel drive system. Now, to justify the price increase on the CT6, of course, it offers extra features. So, for example, you get magnetic ride with the CT6, and, of course, you get a big brake kit in the front. Meanwhile, on the CT5, you get the standard uh, for the front for the 2-liter engine. And, of course, you get standard McPherson uh, struts in the front and the rear side. The design in the front is very similar on both. But the CT6 has a bigger grille in the front and the way the side uh, lights are designed are different to this. So these are actually more bright compared to the CT6. The CT5 has a different shape in here with the break in the center, but this one, it flows all the way through, as you can see. Another major difference between these two, of course, has to do with dimensions. This has a longer wheel base, and of course, it is longer as a vehicle. What they have in common is the actual width. They both have very similar width. 
The only thing that is different is mostly the height, the length, and of course the wheelbase. That gives the CT6 a bit more extra leg room onto the second row seats and of course into the front and the boot itself. Now in technology, they're not that far from each other. So for example, they have blind spot assist, power mirrors, and of course they both have keyless entry as well. So on the outside, they have some similarities. The rear end is different on both vehicles. Like for example, this uses a single exhaust tip at the bottom, meanwhile the CT6 uses a twin exhaust tip on each side for aggressive look and of course it sounds a little bit better too. The CT6 justifies the price increase for a few reasons. First, right now we're into the second row seat and I'm gonna show you some of the features that you get. First, you get a screen in here, which is not touch screen. Uh, you can basically adjust it. You can use it through the remotes into this area. You can change everything in here. You can go down and so on. So, so it has some interesting features. Uh, it shows here the connectivity for the USB and of course the uh, front uh, view screen as well. You can uh, change that from this area. It also offers this armrest with the control unit for the seats and both seats on the rear side are powered and it offers a climate unit onto the center. You also have control of the shade located at the top so you can control it through the buttons onto this side and it offers heated seats and cooling seats for the rear uh, side. You also get a sunshade on the rear windshield so you can of course adjust it with the buttons located onto the side so you can close it and open it and you can do the same thing for the shade located at the top. Meanwhile, in the CT5, well, you're a little bit uncomfortable. As you can see, I'm actually touching the roof with my head, so I can't keep it straight or probably gonna suffocate, but it is kind of tight in here. It feels a little bit cramped compared to the CT6. The actual sunroof is split in half, so you have the front area and the rear area, which of course uses a sunshade that you can close it, but you have no controls from the rear side. It has to happen from the front. So you get a standard button for to lock and unlock the door, and of course for the window. Very standard on the rear side, and with this package we don't even get heated seats or cooling seats for that matter. The new CT5 offers a different design from the other uh, Cadillac series like the XT6 or the XT5. Like for example, the screen in here is in a different position, is not embedded into the actual dashboard. It looks more like a tablet, you can pull it out. A very interesting design. The CT5 offers you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, backup camera, 360 mode of course, and it offers you a built-in navigation system. It uses the new uh, system, uh, it uses the new more friendly uh, system which of course it is a touch screen model. We have a wireless charging pad in the center, it uses different modes of course, we have auto hold, the stop and start option. It has heated seats and ventilated seats in the front. It offers some extra features like so it offers some extra features. You have heated seats and cooling seats. You also have power seats on each side and it offers massage seats as well. Now in the CT6 things get a little bit more exciting. So for example we have this beautiful wood trim onto this area in this side as well. Also the leather feels different. So like for example the dashboard well refined and of course you can feel the luxury side of this. Like it is equipped with a Panerai audio system as you can see into the center in here for better audio quality. It also offers the most advanced uh, driver system package which we will be able to test it out on a highway. It's almost fully autonomous. Now of course it's not connected to the built-in navigation system like Tesla's but it will do a great job on a highway and we'll take it out and we'll test it out. Now in terms of the infotainment system very similar. The only difference is where this is positioned. It doesn't look like a tablet. It's actually built in to the dashboard. Also the CD offers you the actual digital cluster with night vision built in. A very interesting feature that you can use it of course at night. If you wanted to do it at daytime it actually doesn't allow you that. Another difference between the two vehicles is actually the key fob. So this is the CT6 key fob is very similar to the other models as you can see like the XT6 very similar style. Meanwhile this is the CT5 key fob. Uh, let me just have the camera focus on that. As you can see, it's very different design. 
come on, you can focus. It's so cold out there that the actual focus system has completely frozen. There we go. So this is the new key fob for the CT5. Very different style, like this one offers the uh, remote start option from the key fob and of course you can open the tailgates. Now the tailgate on this one is not powered. Meanwhile the CT6 has both but of course a power tailgate. Now let's go for a drive, we're going to take the CT5 first. The reason I picked these two vehicles because one offers a four cylinder, the other one offers the V6. So that way we can compare to them which one is the best for the CT5, which one feels better and of course sounds better. Now let's go for a drive and we're going to do the cabin noise test as well. I use this machine quite a lot, I got a new one. That way we can find out the cabin noise on both vehicles. Let's go for a drive. Okay well let's try first the cabin noise. I'm going to turn this on. Right now we're doing about 60 kilometers an hour. We want to test it out in a 60 zone. Um, see how loud or quiet it is inside and we're going to put it in to tour mode and here we go. So in a 60 zone this is 58.2 58.2 in a highway this would do at 100 kilometers an hour you're looking at about 61 dB it usually goes 2 to 3 dB higher on highway of course because it is um, louder because of the wind and you're driving faster. So in a 60 area this is with some mild traffic. Uh, we have a vehicle in front, one in the back and a couple of others coming around it and we're looking at 58.2. Now that is a very good number. The reason I say that is because most cars are around 61, 60 dB. This is a pretty good number. We'll of course do the same thing with the CD6 but impressed. Now let's talk about how this thing drives. Very soft ride. The suspension system do a very good job in avoiding that um, hardness on the road. It's very comfortable, the seating position for the driver. Visibility is okay in the inside. There's one little complaint about this vehicle. The side mirrors, they're very small. They're wide but they're small and it's hard to like see everything and it doesn't even offer any cameras into the dashboard so you can see it. What you do have, of course, are the blind spot assist, but don't forget, sometimes the sensors during winter time, they don't work very well. So, and right now I'm driving in, so that, that's one thing to keep in mind between these two vehicles. Now, we're going to put it in sport mode, and, and right now we're going to change it into sport mode and see how it does. Here we go. and we have my mode tour sport snow and ice so we're going to put it into sport mode and let's see how much fun we can have with this thing i do feel even in comfort mode that the v6 would be the better choice out of the two Not bad, picks up really quick. Around the second or third gear, this does a better job. It goes really fast from like 60 kilometers to 100 right away. So there is some power delivery onto the wheels. It's not the fastest I've driven. Compared to the BMW 330i, that does a slightly better job at delivering the power onto the wheels. This, on the other hand, struggles a lot with the transmission. The transmission is not picking up as fast the transmission and the engine are not working as as fast, as hard as I want them to be. So right now, let me put into manual mode. You can switch into manual mode by actually pushing, um, by pulling the lever down. So, okay, let's put it into fourth gear. Here we go. Third. So there is a slight gap between gears. That thing I notice. Uh, right away in this vehicle. There is not, it's not as fast as I want it to be. It's an automatic transmission, it's not dual clutch, but downshifting is pretty quick.
brakes are very good in this car, even though there are single pistons in the front. They're uh, pretty amazing. I'm impressed with this car in terms of the braking system. I will say the transmission is not as good as I want it to be. I'm very interested to find out the one used in, of course, the uh, CT6 and the V6. The engine sounds okay, it's not very loud from the rear end. Of course, the four cylinders, don't expect anything crazy about this. Let's do a takeoff, let's do a launch control with this car and see how it does. I'm gonna put it in automatic, of course. Here we go, drive mode. Okay, let's see. Now, keep in mind, this is an all-wheel drive system, so we will do perfectly fine. So here we go. One, two, three, go. 2,000, 4,000 RPM. Um, it takes some time to actually launch. Now, let me turn off the traction completely. Here we go. And into that pedal to the metal. Oh, okay, now that changes everything. That changes everything. Once you switch off the traction, it seems like it sends more power to the wheel and it's grabbing very well onto the road. Even though it's snowing outside and it is wet on the ground, it didn't feel like it's sliding at all. So great job. Let me try one more time. I'm having fun with this car. Uh, with traction off, this does have quite a lot of power. Okay, so brakes down and... Ugh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so with traction off, this will make you have some fun with it. It's pretty good. It's actually pretty good with traction off. Now, day-to-day -day use, this will do great. Don't forget, the bigger the engine, the more uh, fuel you're going to burn, of course. It's, it's standard. But I will say that the V6, I think, once we jump into the CT6, does a better job than this. And imagine that. This is very light compared to the CT6 because, of course, it is bigger dimensions-wise. Uh, we're talking the length, of course. It is bigger. So let's jump on to the CT6 and see how it is. Okay, so for the CT6, we got 56.0. So it's 56.0. So that's about 2.2 dB lower compared to the CT5. Uh, now that's impressive. It's not a lot. Now that's pretty good. It's not a lot. I would expect a little bit more, but mostly the sound isolation will work better on a highway. I'm assuming this will go about two. So you're looking at 58 for this on a highway. Now, Let's talk about how these things drive. First of all, I want to mention that both vehicles use similar side mirrors, which means that it's terrible on both. I personally don't like it. It's very small. It is wide, but it's very small. It's long, but it's very small. Like you can't see very much on it. It's, it's a small, and this one is specifically a bigger vehicle. So something that they didn't do right in this vehicle. I mean, I assume it's more for elegance and fuel efficiency. It's more about elegance and uh, aerodynamic, which I understand that smaller and better uh, looking vehicle. And at the same time, it's better for cutting through air, which is very important for cars to increase the fuel efficiency. But it's not very good on the road. Like I can actually see very little on the car. You can see the car in you, but you want to see further than that, especially on a highway. Now, when it comes to the comfort level, of course, magnetic ride, which does a very good job when you go over potholes or bumpy roads. Um, this is very smooth, very relaxed. The entire vehicle feels very relaxed. Now, how different is the four cylinder to the V6? Well, let's test it out. We're gonna do a lunch and see 
which one is better we did that one first okay now we're going to put it in to sport mode and let's do first without turning off the traction okay one two three go okay it took some time but it's quick oh the difference is massive the difference is massive wow that really took off now at first it didn't launch completely it took some time if we turn off traction that will change everything because you will do a better delivery uh, here we go so hold on okay traction is off okay uh, let's do another one and I have it in sport mode here we go one two three go oh my god <laughs> I mean, and this car is heavier than the CT5. Imagine this on that, at the V6 in the CT5, which is lighter. It's just a rocket. It takes off pretty quick. I have traction control off. I have pretty much uh, sport mode. It's just, it's just perfect. It does a great job. And this car is pretty heavy. Um, let's put it into manual mode. And I have it in, here we go, downshift. Okay, very similar transmission, very uh, different. Now, if you upgrade to the black wing run, uh, you get a different type of transmission. If you upgrade to the black wing uh, CT6, you get a different type of transmission, which is smoother and faster than this one. This one uses standard transmission, automatic transmission, 10 speed, same thing on the CT5. Uh, okay, let's turn off everything. Another interesting thing with this is that it uses a system called Super Cruise for adaptive cruise control. Now, that the CT5 uses standard lane uh, keep assist, of course, forward collision warning, and so on. This, on the other hand, uses a different system called the Super Cruise, which technically drives itself. You just got to input the address, but it works with the GPS and the cameras. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that it only works in a certain highway. So I'm going to take the 401, which is our main highway in Toronto, and see if it actually works, because I test it out in the regular roads, and it says no road information. Okay, so now it turned green, the steering wheel. It's literally driving itself. And let's see how it will do. Like, this is insane. <laughs> This is pretty cool. It also uses gap assist, of course. So it works simultaneously with the camera, with the GPS, to find all the address and everything. Let's see if it's going to exit, because I'm supposed to go back. I put a different address that is literally driving itself. And it's not even telling me to actually put the hands on the wheel. So it's doing all the work itself. Right now, the GPS says you must exit. So it didn't actually exit itself, but it drives itself quite a lot. It only does that when, with, of course, uh, bigger roads, uh, but this, it's, it, it's so <laughs> crazy. Um, it's literally insane. It drives itself. It's very, very cool feature. So that's something that you get with the CT6, an extra package called the Super Cruise for the driver system package. Pretty ama amazing, very impressive, very accurate too. Stays right within the lanes. I'm very impressed with it. Um, again, that's the extra pick. That's, that's what the extra 20 grand or so gets you with this, um, I mean, with this package, you're probably gonna pay another 30 grand or so, but that's what he gets. It's pretty impressive. I'm very, very impressed overall. Now, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe.
As always, don't forget to check out Applewood GM. They've been kind enough to me many, many times. Um, they've been very supportive and they've provided me with cars all the time. So if you want to know more about their dealerships or if you want to take one of these for a drive, well, the link will be in the description box. At the same time, Conquest Canada that has helped me basically connect with all these dealerships across Ontario in able to in order for me to get these cars and of course compare them um, the link for conquest canada will be in the description box they can help you find the right car for the right price soon they will be able to provide you with the trade-in tool as well which you can of course uh, use in order for you to trade in and find out what the valuation of your current car will be and how it will help you uh, with the new trade-in so very useful feature and of course if you're looking used or new car they can help you out with that as well with that in mind cheers that was it for today